This video is for parents at our school, Northridge Preparatory School in Niles, Illinois. My name is Neil Fagan. I'm the headmaster here at Northridge. We recently held a parent lecture on the topic of helping our children with technology. And I think this is a very important topic for us to discuss and consider as a community. We are seeing the impact of technology on our children and, and the families more in general. So for all who weren't able to attend, we've taken the material from that lecture, which ended up being a rather long evening, and we divided it into four shorter videos, about 10 minutes each. We'll also share a handout of practical steps we recommend. And all of this, the videos and the handout, are available online at northridgeprep.org slash technology. So, what are we seeing? Let's start with that. And what I'd like to do is take you through uh, research from Dr. Jean Twenge, who's a sociologist trained in studying generations and uh, studying the data about those generations. And she recently published that in a book of hers called iGen. And iGen, for her, refers to the new generation born between 1995 and 2015. And her point is that this is the first generation to have smartphones, social media, internet from childhood. They grew up with this as just second nature, unlike the rest of us. And what she does is study the impact of that technology on this new generation. And what is she seeing? Well, the first is they're not socializing. Here's a graph that shows how many times per week teenagers hang out on their own without their parents. How many times do they go out without their parents? And you can see in the 70s, it was about three times. Today, it's gone down to about two times per week. That's a 30, 40% drop, especially when you look at the 8th and 10th graders. A significant drop. And when did this really start to decline? Uh, it was 2007, right when the phone's released, and especially once the phone gets into mainstream high school culture. It's a big job, and obviously not socializing is a problem. Not only are they not socializing, they're also not dating as much. The number of teenagers who have ever gone out on a date, and you can see, again, it's dropping significantly. Not only are they not dating as much, also, their driving is being affected. Since 2007, even before, but significantly after, the percentage of teenagers who have a driver's license has gone way down. We don't see this as much here at Northridge because we're a commuter school, but uh, she talks about interviewing teens and saying, yeah, my mom had to really force me to get a license. Okay, so they're not driving, they're not hanging out. Uh, how does this affect their emotions? Loneliness is way up. This is a graph showing what percentage of teens often feel left out or often feel lonely. And you can see it's about a 50% increase in loneliness uh, from 2007. Now, obviously this is disturbing and not, not healthy. So this book was published in 2017. The available data at the time ended in 2015. And the question is, are these trends continuing today? And the answer is yes. Here's a study that just came out on depression. The most recent available data is 2018, and you can see the trend line is continuing. Major depressive episodes in the past year among youth uh, aged 12 to 17. And the point is, the data here is continuing in the trend that the graphs would suggest, and I suspect it's also true in driving and socializing. So what are they doing with this time? They're not driving, they're not hanging out. What are they doing? Um, one assumption a lot of people have is, well, they're spending a lot more time on homework. You know, students these days are uh, feeling the pressure to get into college, and so they're studying a lot more. And the answer is actually, no, that's not true. Twelfth graders spend a little bit less now on homework than about a decade ago. And she shows this here, um, combined total time and homework, extracurriculars, and jobs. It's not changed a whole lot, but it's gone down a bit. So what are they doing with it? And the answer, of course, is they're spending it on screens. So let's take a look at the typical 12th grader. Average hours per day the 12th grader spends on screens. Uh, texting is 2.5 hours. It's a lot of time. That's 2.5 hours per day. On the internet, which is social media, YouTube, and so forth, another two hours. Video chat, gaming, another hour and a half total. So for a total of six hours a day. That's a 12th grader. You might think, well, okay, middle schoolers, eighth graders, what do they spend? It's not that much different. It's a total of five hours a day, more or less the same. Now, obviously some of that is multitasking. They're texting while they're um, on the internet. But by and large, it's five hours a day, at least on screen time, if you take care of, if you assume some some multitasking. And I've heard studies recently that it's actually nine hours a day on average. That's from Common Sense Media. They're spending a lot of time. Their total waking hours, well, the typical waking hours each day is on average 17 hours. And about one third of that is spent on screens. Nearly all their leisure time now is spent on screens. And what's the impact? Well, we saw some of it, obviously, in the driving, socializing, it's down. Um, it's also impacting sleep. 
This is the percentage of teenagers who get less than seven hours of sleep. Seven hours is the bare minimum to be rested. And you know, it's not quite enough. 41% of teens today do not get seven hours of sleep. That impacts their studies. It impacted the amount of times they go out to, with friends. It's also impacting the amount of times they go out to a party. This is percentage of teens who go to a party at least one time a month you can see it's dropping significantly. This is not healthy. It's very good for them to socialize and they're not doing it as much. Depression is also on the rise. It's worse for girls, but it's going up for boys. Suicide rate is going up alarmingly fast. Thankfully, this is relatively no, low numbers out of a thousand, but we all know it's going up significantly. Bullying, in 2007, 19% of teens claim they were bullied. Today, one third of teens claim they're bullied. And in the past, in 2007, it was in person. Today, most of that's online. So about one out of three feels bullied online. It's also not good for studying. Switching, switching um, focus here. They did a study of the average college student's laptop. So while the average college student is studying or writing a paper, the average student switched between tasks every 19 seconds. That's not 19 minutes, 19 seconds. Computer windows were open less than one minute for 75% of students. This is not what we want for our sons. This is not an effective way to study for an exam in college or write a paper. Obviously, they're not going to be well, well prepared or write well. So that's what we're seeing. Why is this happening? We'll discuss that in the next video.